Hey you gang, we are in western, far western Minnesota today. And boy, we're right by North Dakota. This was quite a haul. Anyway, we are at a cemetery called, it's actually called Fairview. It's in Raymond, although it says Raymond here on the cemetery, we're gonna pull in. Very small cemetery. Pull in and we are in. And we're gonna be talking about the story here. We gotta find the grave in the snow here of a little girl, a little six-year-old girl who was buried alive in her coffin. So let's go find her grave. I'll tell you the story. Okay, before we get started, I want to thank one of our viewers and subscribers, Viking419, for giving me the heads up on the story. Viking means he lives in Minnesota, I'm guessing. But this is quite a quite a terrible story. We got a little wind blowing, so hope that's okay. Do the best we can with the highway here next door. But the little girl, yeah, her name was Anna Mary Twenta. They called her Annie. She was born October 14th, 1880 in Pendleton, Kentucky. Now she was the second daughter of Richard and Elizabeth. Uh, the wife, the mother of her, she went by the name Lizzie. They had a couple of sisters after her and not much is known about their life in Kentucky, but they started to get on the road here in 1884, Anna and her family. They probably took a train to Minnesota to start their new life. Let me tell you, even from, to, uh, you know, here in Minnesota, maybe it was Minneapolis where they got off the train. But I gotta tell you, this is 100 miles and when you're just driving through farmland, it is, it is endless. You can just imagine as pioneers in the, you know, 1880s, them coming out here. Well, they got here and actually they, they were not far from a place, I shouldn't say here, they were down at a place called Hanska in Elbin Township. That's about, 100 miles, well, probably 80 or 90 miles southeast of here. Why they're buried here, I'm not sure. Maybe it was extended family. From what I understand, there's a lot of people buried here from the family, but they purchased 160 acres in 1884 for $1,140. The father was doing granary and also had a like a nursery business, and he was doing really well. And the girls, you can imagine, were helping around the farm, doing what girls do. They probably had some animals, and they were having a great life. 
But when Annie was only six years old, she developed what they call then lung fever. We know that now is pneumonia and she passed away. Now there are some say that she may have taken a fall from the hayloft chasing a kitten. No one knows for sure, but she may have fallen on her head, but either way she was in a coma for several days. And we've talked about this in those days. Not sure if someone is dead. And finally when they decided that she was going to be pronounced dead. And the father, by the way, he was a Mormon. So there was a conflict, you know, between Lizzie and Richard was his name. Wouldn't allow the doctors to come, all that kind of stuff. And the mother was going hysterical, but you know, this is what happened. And he wouldn't allow anyone to come by. A lot of people didn't like him. He had a temper, he's a big guy. And you now he basically made the pronouncement that she was dead. After she laid there for many days on October 26, 1886, she was prepared for burial. And little Annie, Annie Mary was laid to rest in Iberia Cemetery, which is now known as Oak Ridge Cemetery. Or a, the town of Iberia is long gone. Now Lizzie, the mom, she had, you know, we've heard this before too, premonitions like she was going hysterical, like wanted to confirm that the little girl was indeed dead. So Richard and another guy, they finally went to the cemetery to check just to, just to pacify her. And they dug her up and to their horror, they opened up the coffin and she was there, she was turned sideways, curled up, her hair was pulled out, scratch marks inside the coffin all over the place, and tufts of hair, tufts of hair in her, in her hands, in her little fingers. This reminds me of the Anna Hawk Vault. I'll put the link in Dayton, Ohio. Same kind of gruesome details. Same kind of stuff, guys. Really spooky. Well, the father, Richard, yeah, the, the short story on it after that is he basically built, uh, he of course took her home. He, he, was, he, he was beside himself, blaming himself, as you could understand. And what he did was he built a little cemetery there at the farm at the top of the hill. 18 inch thick stone wall, four feet high with an iron gate and made a little cemetery where he would guard her there for many, many years. Eventually she ended up here with the rest of the family. You can go, you can go there. There's nothing left, of course. People took everything, but it's, it's still there. I'm gonna put a picture of it right here so you can see it's from Find a Grave or somebody had visited. I could not find the location. Love to go there, but yeah, their graves are right up here. There are two massive stones. Well, one massive stone and a smaller stone. And I am going to actually cut. I'm going to pause the video because I've got to put some gloves on. I didn't realize it was this cold. It's about 16, 17 degrees and my fingers are about to go. So I'll be right back. Okay, that's much better. Oh, <laughs> well, let's take a look here. There are no inscriptions that I can see on this big one, but it does appear there are inscriptions on this one. And this is, I believe the stone, this is their stone. So 
Well, let's see. Very tough to read. I did bring the trusty flashlight. Some beautiful carvings. It's made of granite, so we should probably be able to see uh, some of the some of the inscriptions here. Well, there it is. Mary. I don't know if you can read that, guys, but it says Annie Mary. Right there. And boy, oh boy, it just shows you, even in granite. Well, we'll get it off Find a Grave. I'll, I think it says 18, 1880. Best I can see. Maybe in editing we can see better. And there are some inscriptions here. And again, maybe when this gets produced on this camera, maybe you guys can read it. But I sure cannot. But I will hold the light and I'll give it another pass here. All right. See how that works. All right. So, Fenta, we see the name. It's plain as day here. Okay. Well, it's pretty darn cold here. In Minnesota, I think this is probably the coldest I've, this is the coldest episode. This is the coldest episode I've ever done. So, thanks for coming with me here. It's been fun, but I am out of here. <laughs> I'm gonna go warm up in the car. Rest in peace, Annie Mary and Twenta family. <laughs>